Greetings and welcome to the Homeless Consultant channel. My name is Paul B. I am the Homeless Consultant. And just when we thought we were done with creepy headlight stalkers, nope. There is one group of headlight stalkers who I have not profiled yet. And the reason, ironically, is because they are true stalkers. These, these guys are, in fact, stalking me. The, the the other ones I've profiled so far, I've voiced, I've said all along, you know, I don't have any real evidence that they're paying any great attention to me. The, the coincidences seem to hint that, but I don't have any, you know, Minnesotans are passive aggressive. They will park their cars with their headlights on and they will, you know, if they can bother somebody and get away with it, they'll do it. Um, but I've never necessarily thought, you know, someone said, well, maybe you're part of gang stalking and all that. And it's like, yeah, I, don't, I don't think the creepy headlight stalkers are out to get me specifically. I think a couple of them are just because they're local yokels and they don't like a homeless guy in their parking lot. So they're trying to intimidate me. But, you know, I mean, for the most part, I think it's pretty much random. The group I'm going to profile here in this video, though, they absolutely positively have been stalking me from the beginning. And I'm going to tell you why, and that's what makes it interesting. These are taxi drivers. And taxi drivers have to go sit in parking lots and wait for a call. I understand that. Originally, they didn't mess with me at all. Can you guess when they started messing with me? It was right after this drug dealer who I keep profiling on this channel started paying attention to me. And these taxis talk to the drug dealer. See, they're all part of the same uh, subculture, you might call it out here. And they talk to each other. So when this idiot drug dealer, who's apparently selling heroin to the high school kids out here, when this bonehead, in his paranoia, began to think, apparently, from what I can tell, that I was watching him when, in fact, I'm just sitting here minding my own business trying to do my own thing because I don't have anywhere else to go. So he started messing with me, which, of course, made me have to pay attention to him for my own safety. And then he saw that, and then that reinforced in his paranoid, drugged-out mind that, you know, I must be a threat to him. Then he starts talking to these taxi drivers. You can see these guys out there talking. All the taxi drivers talk to each other. And from that point on, these taxis have been messing with me big time. And I've never profiled them. So I'm going to give you one example here um, of what just happened this morning. So I had my time lapse up on the dashboard already. Because first of all, I knew one of these taxis was going to pull in very soon. Because they always do this time of morning. And um, I was trying also to capture the, the lights shut down abruptly and then turn back on slowly. So I was just kind of uh, capturing that with time lapse. And, um, you, you know, you can watch what's happening with the video. And then notice at the end, uh, this taxi, a minivan, pulls into this empty lot. Just nothing in this lot. And he makes a beeline straight headed directly at me with his headlights. And then he parks, and because his headlights are on, he can see the camera in my dashboard. Because these guys know that I film them. They see me do it all the time. So he shuts his headlights off. So then I turn off the time-lapse function, and I get out the camera regular to show that the parking lot is empty. And I raise it up to show, if you look at the, the painted lines on there, you can see this guy is parked totally sideways in order to face me directly. All right, now what, what he's doing in that dark van while he's staring at me, I don't want to know. People like that creep me out. The point I want to make is that the whole time I'm just sitting here in my car, minding my own business, working, ironically, working on the long-awaited drug video which has one month of research into it and what initiated that research was their good friend the drug dealer in this lot how's that for some irony I'm finishing up the drug video right now and this guy pulls in and stalks me and I just wanted to put this online to show you now this I hail their services include airport taxi yellow cab and town taxi as well as I hail all of these guys 
have engaged in what you're seeing here, which is blatant stalking, um, to the point where when there, you know, there's several lots that I spend days in, and these guys come into those lots and they do this to me every time. Um, they don't necessarily have their headlights on, which is another way that I know that they're stalking, because they're always pointed right at me, they get right up next to me, they get closer to me than anyone else. Um, just the fact that every time they do it, I start my car and I leave, you'd think they'd figure out that I don't like being stalked like that. And indeed they do, that's exactly why they do it. So this is meant to be, sorry my hand's like, I have to hold the camera here to get enough light and it's all shaky. Um, so these guys are clearly doing it on purpose and like I said, I don't know what they're doing with one of their hands down here while they're watching me, but these guys are creepy. And I think the main reason I wanted to put it online is because you've really got to think twice before you use the services of iHail, um, airport taxi, yellow cab, or uh, town taxi here in the Minneapolis area because these guys are spooky not only are they in some way shape or form affiliated with this drug dealer who owns this parking lot basically but the behavior they've shown toward me is the definition of creepy and you just saw it for yourself beyond that um, ride with them at your own risk I wouldn't trust these guys for a second that's all I got for you thank you for watching